Welcome back to the Tuesday edition of Mike Duffy Live. Well, members of the Federal Liberal Caucus are gathering in Ottawa to analyze the results of last week's general election. They'll be meeting tomorrow and Thursday. Stefan Dion says he's going to stay on as leader until a new leader is chosen at some point next year. Joining us now from Toronto, uh, Liberal MP John McCollum, who was widely touted as the interim leader of the Liberal Party. In Saskatoon, David Orchard, Liberal candidate in Saskatchewan. And also in Toronto, Stephen LeDrew, former president of the Liberal Party. Thank you all uh, for coming in. Uh, Bob Ray was out today telling journalists the leadership convention should be held sooner rather than later. Stephen LeDrew, is that the approach you think the party should take? Well, I think that approach is good for Bob Ray and Mike Lignatia because it precludes other candidates from uh, getting into the race. And uh, I think that I've spoken to, um, to a number of people who are uh, talking about uh, potentially going into it, and you've had that speculation, Mike. I think that uh, the longer it is, we shouldn't have a long, drawn-out affair, but there should be an appropriate time, Mike, for people like um, you know, Martha Hall Finley and for LeBlanc to seriously gauge the, the depth of support for themselves, to raise some dough, and see if they want to, uh, to run. John, a lot of people thought you would have been the ideal interim leader because you're bilingual, you're a professional, and uh, highly respected on all sides of the commons. Um, now that that does not seem to be in the cards, what about this point that Stephen is making that if, it, if it, there's a danger of it dragging on too long, but yet if you go too quickly, fresh blood or uh, people like Brian Tobin or Frank McKenna or uh, David John McGinty, McCallum. some people men mention him, or John himself, uh, will not, would not have, a, have enough time to feel out the field. What's your sense, John, on, on that? Well, first of all, Mike, in terms of your comment on interim leader, uh, I, I was prepared to take the job if asked, but I certainly fully support Stefan Dion's decision to stay on until the new leader is elected. And I think uh, Stephen has captured the balance that we have to capture, the balance that we have to strike. On the one hand, we don't want it to be too drag, dragged out, which creates difficulties in Parliament, uh, because we don't want really to have an election uh, before we have a new leader. So the shorter the better. But on the other hand, not too short, because we want to make it fair for a potential new candidates. So I don't know. The party will decide. Perhaps the date they have in mind is the best, or maybe they'll go a bit earlier. David, what, what about you? you you've, uh, you're a, really a professional politician who's, who's uh, got a network from coast to coast. What are your supporters telling you, and are you giving active consideration to jumping in, or has this thing been cooked already? Well, we've got a leader, uh, Mike, and there's been a scapegoating <coughs> frenzy against Mr. Dion. Uh, uh, I think he should stay on. Mr. Pearson got uh, three kicks at the can. You'll recall in 1958, Mr. Pearson got elected at the beginning of the year and stood up and challenged Diefenbaker, said, hand me over the government. Diefenbaker took him at his word and wiped the floor with him. Mr. Pearson got 49 seats only, but he got a second chance. And then in 1962, Mr. Diefenbaker defeated him again, and he got a third chance. And Mr. Pearson gave us Medicare, gave us the flag, gave us the Canada Pension Plan. All of this wouldn't have happened if we'd applied this standard that we throw at the leader if he doesn't uh, win an election. Then Laurier, same thing, 1887, he was elected. He had four years to build a party, but John A. Macdonald uh, beat the pants off him in 1891 over the free trade issue. Laurier got a second chance. John Turner got a second chance. Stephen Harper, didn't he get a second chance? He didn't win the first time. So why this standard, uh, this rush to, uh, to throw our leader out? I think he, he should stay on. He uh, has done... Uh, very good things. Yes, there's been some mistakes, but he's also had spectacular successes. He gave us the clarity okay. bill. He gave us the David, first Kyoto David, Convention. Yep. We we're going to get the Kelowna Accord out of all this. So uh, I think uh, our leader should stay in place. Dave, I'll tell you, you asked why should the leader not stay on. I'll tell you why he should not stay on. It's not just that he lost the election. It's how he lost the election. He didn't know until the last day that he had lost it. Everybody else in the country knew that. He has shown time and time again that his, uh, his arrogance is astonishing, and it's breathtaking. And even yesterday in his speech, he said, I ran a great campaign. I had the right platform. It's those dirty, rotten Tories who beat me, and they should have had the money. That's politics. This man does not get politics. And so I, I'm astonished, David, that you would want to keep him on. And secondly, he's already said he's leaving. So what would the petition do? I'm wondering whether, David, in fact, the Tories have put you up to this. 
Well, Mr. LeDrew, Mr. LeDrew, that's uh, nonsense. I'm actually astonished that in the middle of an election campaign, you would write a piece saying the Liberals needed a beating. So uh, I'll, this is... I'll tell you why they here, did. I'm I'll sorry, tell you why they did. They needed that. So I can't hear you, but I want to make the yeah. point that we've got these armchair quarterbacks who have never been through the heat of an election campaign uh, now uh, demanding that our leader quit. It's not up to the caucus, and it's not up to the media to tell our leader when to quit. He was elected in a democratic convention, and the, the, he serves at the will of the members of the party, and we have not yet asked him to to, uh, to resign. We don't have a system David, uh, to do in Britain David, where the, the if caucus I could say can, uh, can toss out uh, the leader. Here it's the members me, democratically elected. It would be a and it's not the Tories that are making me say that. David, it's my belief in democracy. Let, let, can I just say one thing? While David, ahead, gets his, while David gets his earphone in, let me just uh, mention that Mr. Orchard and some friends have put up a website, which is a petition, and I think we have the graphic for the, uh, for the website. It's an online petition uh, urging um, Mr. Dion to stay on, and you see some of the names. Uh, and I think somewhere we have the URL for it here, which is, uh, I'm sure you can find it at davidorchard.ca. Uh, John like McCartney, if I can say, it wasn't, uh, I didn't really have anything to do with that petition, so it wasn't uh, me that, uh, that started, but I can say, that I'm in favor of a democratic it. process, and the members of the party have not asked the leader to resign. And with all due respect to your colleagues, I think it was the anchor, not on your network, Mike, of course, but the other network last night, who said caucus should just elect a new leader. That is not our system. The members That's of the what Liberal they do Party Britain, have yeah. the right to elect no, the they, John, they do John that in but this discussion is a little bit pointless, if I may say, because Stefan Dion has already decided himself what he's going to do. Point. And so, so I don't know why we are. I, say so I really don't know why we are talking about this. I, I don't think well, even Ledru's comments during the election were at all helpful. But you know, Dion has said what he's going to do. We all support what he's doing, and we're not electing a leader by the caucus. I, we're having I a guess, convention. I guess my point is sooner rather than later what about getting fresh blood what about the new generation it seems to me there are a lot of pertinent issues that that could be, still be looked at even as uh, mr dion stays in stornoway so mike there's a lot of rebuilding of the party that has to go on that's going to start it's actually started today both on the policy level the organizational level the fundraising level and and i agree mike that we do need some some new fresh blood in the party and that's what this process is all about and just back for one point to david orchard when he said there is a process yes there is a process it would have been at a convention and there would have been blood all over the floor and the liberal party doesn't need that the liberal party needs to rebuild and move on which is what's going on right now which is terrific if i can say something here this new fresh blood exactly what we got with stefan dion remember all of the everyone saying now we've got some new ideas we've got a change of the old guard and you're going to try to throw out the leader when he makes uh, after his first election this is not uh, going to encourage new fresh blood new fresh blood is letting the people have their say mr ledru not some pundits uh, and not some uh, uh, some uh, outspoken but people of the caucus but well, the this people had their say in the liberal party did not begin with stefan dion this has been going on for the last three elections so to try to scapegoat people, mr dion and pin it all on him is not right no one's, you know, no one's doing that david hang on for a second but, uh, put your earpiece back here so an you can hear and, uh, david. and you're attempting to scapegoat our leader here i'm not scapegoating, scapegoating at all the people of canada spoke it can't be more democratic than that so i agree with john mccallum the leader made a decision, everybody let should move on, and it's silly to have a petition to keep him there. Let me ask well, you, know, the problem with Mr. Dion, Mr. Dion made the point that, you know, we've got strict election spending uh, regulations, but it, it, that's in the, in the writ period, but before that, the, the sky is the limit, and we saw the, the, the Conservatives last time they used, they, they circumstanced the rules by using this in-out scheme, this time they ran a whole campaign for a year and a half against our leader outside of the spending limits. That's the kind of thing we have to look at, not throwing out David, our leader. We have to look at how the David, Liberal Party got to where it is and how we rebuild it and how we bring in this new fresh blood instead of paying uh, for the, for the leader, our leader's head on a plate. I have to uh, give John Collin the final word because he's been a very patient gentleman as he always is. But I just asked David Orchard one thing. Have you read the, the Michael Marzellini memo that has been in the Toronto Star? It shows that back as early as April, there were dire warnings given, and I think that explains a lot of the bitterness that's out there, especially on Mike, the Mike, Mike, 
Mike, I was I was one that warned against this uh, <coughs> this uh, tax on diesel fuel. Uh, there is a problem with it, and I said there'd be a problem with it. And I'm not denying there's been mistakes. Uh, in fact, uh, someone one could argue that I've maybe been on the receiving end of some of these mistakes. But those are not reasons for our leader to to resign. He's been through the heat of battle. He performed well, and uh, we should be backing him and, let, and putting the focus on Mr. With Harper, respect, not on throwing our leader. I think Mike wanted Final to give word me the last John. word. I would say this is a ridiculous conversation. The leader has made his decision. On Mike decision. Duffy Live, the, a ridiculous the, the conversation. The leader has made his decision. Fans. He wasn't forced out. He decided to step down. The convention will happen in the normal way. A new leader will come. We have a lot of work to do to raise money and to uh, reach out to the grassroots and to get the new leader in place. And in the meanwhile, uh, Parliament will function under Stephen Dion. It's really very Mr. Simple. McCallum, what happened to Mr. Trudeau in 1980? He quit, but he came oh. back, right? Oh, you John, never say never. John McCallum for leadership candidate. Well, that, that Trudeau return scenario I've heard before. Thank you all, i.e. February election. Thank you all for joining us today. David, good to see you in off the combine. You got yeah, the Alfalfa. Off the, the combine, yes. Thank you, good Mike. You. Thank you Thanks all for joining us today.